Good morning, church. It's time for us to begin. Let's be standing together as we sing. Majesty, worship is majesty, unto Jesus be all glory, power, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem reign. on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship is majesty. Jesus who died, now glorify. King of all kings, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings, mighty is our God, mighty is our King, mighty is our Lord, He's ruler of everything. Glory to our God, glory to our King, glory to our Lord, He's ruler of everything, His name is higher, higher than any other name, His power is greater, for He has created everything, mighty is our God, mighty our King, mighty is our Lord, He's ruler of everything, glory to our God, glory to our King, glory to our Lord, He's ruler of everything, His name is higher, higher than any other name, His power is greater. He's created everything. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our King. Mighty is our Lord. He's ruler of everything. Glory to our God. Glory to our King. Glory to our Lord. He's ruler of everything. Ruler of everything, he's ruler of everything. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. He formed the creatures Not a plant or flower. 
Well, good morning, church. Welcome to Northside. It's great to be with you. Uh, We're glad you're here. If you are a guest here with us today, we want you to know that you are welcome here. Uh, Our service this morning will be streamed live and recorded for those who can't be here in person and will be available on demand at our website and our YouTube channel. If you're online, say hello in the chat and let us know you're with us. Uh, Whether you're here in person or online, we'd love to hear from you. Please fill out a digital connect card by visiting nscoc.org slash connect or grab a card from the back of the seat in front of you and fill that out. And uh, if you'd like to follow along with the order of service, check out our event in the YouVersion Bible app or visit nscoc.org slash YouVersion. We invite everyone to participate in our season of generosity. Each day through April 8th, there is a suggested item to donate to ministries such as Loaves and Fishes, Safe Ministry, and Children's Ministry. Then we'll all bring our donated items to church on Easter Sunday and drop them off in the atrium. We believe cultivating generosity is an important Christian spiritual practice. Let's join our efforts to inspire a season of generosity. Sign up today at nscoc.org slash emails or pick up a handout in the atrium. This morning we continue our series on living into God's mission. And we're excited to hear from Regina Bridges and Dexter Freeman about Grief Share and People Helping, two of the ministries that are making a difference and being the hands hands and feet of Jesus right here in San Antonio. With that in mind, I've asked the singers to share a song that I hope we'll be singing as a congregation very soon. For now, I invite you to listen, pay attention to the words, and let the message sink in. This is Let Us Be You. Mm-hmm. Live in our hearts, fill this body, stir our spirit. Help us serve, walk with our feet to the hurting. Let us be you, revive your church. Let us be you on this earth. Let us be you when a wounded soul cries out for hope. Let us be you. Just as your stars pierce through the night, let us forever shine your light. Let us be you, let us be you on this earth. Reach with our hands, touch this city. Lord, let our mouths speak your truth. Use our blessings to bring justice. Let us be you. Revive your church. Let us be you on this earth. Let us be you when a wounded soul cries out for hope. Let us be you when a lonely need to know. Just as your stars pierce through the night, let us forever shine your light. Let us be you, let us be you on this earth. Let us be you. Oh, 
Father in heaven, we're so grateful to you for this opportunity to come before your throne of grace together as a family. And thank you for the blessings you continue to shower upon us. We especially thank you for your Holy Spirit who lives within us to comfort and guide us. Lord, we pray this morning specifically for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. You said those Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You didn't say we wouldn't grieve, but that we would not grieve as those who have no hope of the resurrection, and that you would comfort us in our grief. So open our eyes and hearts to be your hands and feed your heart to those who are hurting in this way, dear Father. And God, we pray to you for those of us who are in need in any way, You told us through your prophet Micah that we were to act justly and love mercy and walk humbly with you. So open our eyes each day to those who need help, whether it be financial needs, a need for encouragement, whatever the need. Lord, let us be known in our community as a family who love and help one another, who help and love one another and who help others thus showing the world who you are. Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us as we continue our worship here today. In the name of Jesus, amen. We are, uh, we are in the midst of uh, a series of Sundays that will culminate in the first two Sundays of April. The second Sunday of April, of course, April 9th, is, uh, is Easter Sunday, and we will join with Christians all over the world in praising God, not only for the resurrection of his son, but for our own resurrection, uh, because God's kingdom always ends in resurrection. But the Sunday before, April the 2nd, uh, is a Sunday that uh, we're Uh, uh, calling uh, Local Mission Sunday. We, uh, uh, I I know that uh, those who've been members for a while are aware that we have traditionally had a Mission Sunday at the uh, the end of uh, of each year or the fall of each year, uh, somewhere around uh, October. Uh, This year we're dividing that contribution into two. It will be the same contribution, but we're going to focus in different ways. So there will be, in October of this year, uh, what we'll call Global Mission Sunday, and we will focus our efforts down on the work in San Luis and and, uh, missions to Mexico and Guatemala and other opportunities uh, that we uh, will have. Uh, But for April 2nd, we're focusing on what happens in this city, Uh, uh, what happens with our uh, uh, traditional uh, missions uh, uh, local work, loaves and fishes, uh, the safe ministry dealing with uh, adoption and foster kids, 
uh, and local outreach. And the funding for that, let's go ahead and, and put, uh, put that slide on. The funding for, for those programs will be for next year, for 2024. They're already fully funded this year. But we're, we need to go ahead and get in place so that we can have our plans together and have our work and our commitments together uh, for that year. But we're also using this as an opportunity to, to expand our understanding of the nature of mission. The whole church is a mission church. Everything we do is a part of God's mission. We want an opportunity to, to think uh, together uh, about ways that all of our work uh, can engage this city uh, and, and this community. And so that, that goal will not only include next year's funding for uh, loaves and fishes, safe and local outreach, but it will fund some things for this year for some new ministries of this church, two of which you'll hear about today, uh, as well as some, some outreach efforts by uh, children's and, and youth uh, uh, ministries. And, uh, and if our giving is substantial enough, we'll be able to expand our youth ministry and open the doors um, for a young adults ministry uh, by an ability to hire a second youth minister. All that is at, at play as we build up to uh, April the 2nd. There are two ministries that we'll talk about today. We're, we're just simply in these weeks uh, providing information about uh, inspiration, about encouragement about uh, ministries of this church. That's what these, these lessons are, is a, is a way of sharing with the congregation some of the important work that's going on at, uh, at, at Northside. Uh, several months ago, uh, Regina Bridges uh, came to the elders and ministers of this congregation with a proposal uh, for a grief share ministry she herself had been impacted by such a ministry, and she felt like that this was an opportunity not only for our own members, but for those in our community, and it was immediately accepted and encouraged. That ministry has begun. Regina's not waiting. She's, she's moving and on her way. It, its funding to this point is zero, and we need an opportunity, as she will share with you shortly, uh, about ways that we can use some funds that will allow this work to continue. And I hope you'll encourage Regina and those who are involved in that really, really important ministry uh, as she shares with us today the things going on there. And then Dexter Freeman, uh, one of our elders uh, who has long worked with a people helping ministry, is going to share with us what's going on in people helping. People helping is not going to be a part of the April 2nd uh, uh, giving, because people helping has needs all year long, all the time. Uh, helping those who are in need, uh, uh, certainly those who are part of uh, our own household of faith, uh, is a vital uh, need. This has been an extraordinary ministry over the years, and I hope today that you will uh, listen to, uh, gain from, and are willing to support the kind of ministries that this church is doing. Before uh, Regina and Dexter do uh, their presentation today, uh, would you listen as Al Campbell reads for us from God's Word? I brought my own large print. It is a tradition amongst many traditions in the Christian faith that when God's Word is read, uh, the congregation stands. And uh, for those of you who are able and willing, I would encourage you to do that. We'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. I also want to warn you, um, I've added a couple verses. Of course, it's Al up here. Uh, <laughs> actually, there are two introductory verses to this scripture that I'm going to share with you, so they're not up there. It was a last-minute uh, decision on my part, and uh, with the blessings of... John and Tina and Dexter and Regina, they're going to let me do it. So anyway, one of the reasons we stand is because as we read this word, we want to offer our respect and our thanksgiving to the one who spoke it. When the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. 
All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did, for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. May God add his blessing to our hearts and our minds and our souls as we share together in his word. Good morning, church family. When I was given the opportunity to speak to you this morning, I struggled with the direction I wanted this to go. Should I get up here and tell you all the stories about people in the Bible who have grieved? Most of you already know those. Should I just stand here and talk about grief share? Well, yeah, that's what I was asked to do. (laughs) But there's more. I thought about it, I prayed about it, and I just felt like the topic of grief in general needed to be addressed. So that's what we're going to do first. In my studying for this lesson, I found some interesting statistics. More than 57% of Americans have reported experiencing a major loss in the last three years. Out of those, 20% 20 of them will experience what we call complicated grief. And out of those, 12% will never seek help. They will never properly process their emotions, and they will face very difficult times due to this. Grief. It's one of those words that people just don't like to say, but it's also one of the things that everyone will face at some point in their life, and most people will face it multiple times. Grief isn't bad. The Bible actually tells us that it's a healthy response to loss. Here's the thing, though. There are two unhealthy responses to loss, repression and suppression. Repression is when we unconsciously block our painful thoughts and feelings. Suppression is when we consciously block those thoughts and feelings. To not allow ourselves to sort through the painful thoughts and feelings of loss is a mistake. The grieving process is God's gift for getting us through the losses and transitions of life and cannot be hurried or brushed aside. The emotions of grief must be felt and processed so we can eventually move to a place where we are able to live with our losses. The emotions we feel will help heal our broken hearts. The emotions we feel will help us to accept that our lives will be different because of our loss. Not only will our life be different, but we will be different. As we work through the emotions, we will be able to to hang on to the love we gave and received and the positive memories we shared. But in the end, we must always realize that our hearts will always be wounded by our loss. We don't get over grief. We get through grief. We don't get over a major loss. We get through it. So if grief is so common and it's a healthy response, why is it so hard for us to talk about? What makes it such a taboo topic? I think the reason that grief is hard to talk about is because it means so many different things and so many different emotions to so many different people. Even if someone's grief isn't classified as complicated grief, like I mentioned earlier, 
There can still be lasting side effects if it's not properly addressed. And it's confusing. The impacts of grief are more than just emotional. They're physical, they're mental, they're spiritual. The three most common experiences with grief are intense sorrow and pain, problems accepting the loss, and a feeling of guilt or self-blaming. And when left unresolved, the complications such as depression, anxiety, substance abuse, and a variety of other health issues may arise. Even more confusing than the grief itself are the things that trigger the grief. Some personal examples from me. Singing an old hymn in church, I instantly hear my mom's angelic voice beside me and I'm overcome with emotion and I can't get through the song. Or watching a medical drama on TV, I'm taken back to that hospital room when my brother took his last breath and that's not the memory I want of my brother, but that's where my mind goes. Or when I see an adult woman with her mom and the joyous relationship they share, I'm overcome with jealousy because there's so many things I need to talk to my mom about. Or when I see one of our young people having an amazing relationship with their grandparent, I'm filled with anger at the time that was taken away from my kids and their grandparents. As you can see, those are everyday things that trigger a variety of emotion in me. Everyday occurrences that can just bring those on. But those triggers are gonna be different for everyone. What, what triggers my emotions may not have an effect on you and your grief. And so that makes it difficult to know how to approach people that are grieving because what if you say the wrong thing? What if you mention something that brings out a, an emotion in them that they aren't prepared to deal with or that you aren't prepared to deal with? Another misconception about grief is that we as Christians aren't supposed to be sad. We're supposed to trust God. We're supposed to find joy. We're supposed to have that peace that surpasses all understanding. And because of that, when we see someone really struggling and overcome with grief, we wonder what's wrong with them. Why can't they just rest in the assurance that God's got this? But you know what? Jesus tells, him, tells his, himself that grief is okay. In Matthew 5, 4, in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. They will be comforted. What does that mean? That's where this becomes a mission. We've been talking the last couple of weeks at Northside about the mission of God. We have heard about living into God's mission. We have heard about our fantastic ministries to our youth and our children and how those ministries are a mission. And today, I'm going to talk to you about Grief Share, and Dexter's going to share with you about people helping. But what makes Grief Share a mission? First, let me tell you a little bit about what our Grief Share ministry has done so far. I first told you all about the ministry in October of last year. One of the misconceptions and questions I've had about Grief Share is that it's grief counseling or grief therapy. But what makes Grief Share unique is that it is a lay-led position and support group. I'm not a grief professional, but I am someone who has walked in some really dark valleys after very big losses in my life, and I found God's love despite my broken heart. Grief Share puts you in a room with people who understand. You learn together and you grow together and you share your common struggle. In November, we hosted a Surviving the Holidays workshop. We had 12 attendees for an afternoon together. We had Northside members, as well as others from the community. Our time together was a blessing. We shared how to keep our loved one's memories alive through the holiday, how to deal with family members who might not be understanding our painful grief, and we discussed traditions, how to keep those memories alive while our loved ones were gone. In January, we began our first grief share group. We will actually wrap up that session in the next couple of weeks. For those who may have missed my initial talk about what grief share is, let me tell you. It's a 13 week study. We meet weekly, we watch a short video, we have 
group discussion, and then during the week we have little daily exercises we do on our own. It's a Bible-based program, and it's to help those that are dealing with the loss of a loved one, regardless of how recent that loss was. The theme of the study is the journey from mourning to joy. Our videos are full of testimony from everyday people, as well as Christian leaders and counselors. In our current group, we have myself and six other attendees. We have those that have lost spouses, parents, siblings, children. We have those that have suffered their loss within the last year, and those who have losses that happened years ago. We have men, we have women, we have young adults, we have older adults. But you know what? We're all blessing each other so much. For this first round, we did only open registration to Northside members, but we are now in the planning stages for our next offering, and we plan to open it up to the community. Missions. Reaching to our own members, reaching to the community, helping those mourning find the comfort that Jesus promised us. So, how can you help in this mission? Financially, each participant in our group purchases a workbook. When we did the holiday workshop, we had a very generous donor cover all of the expenses. When we had our first round of grief share, I had a couple of individuals come up to me and say, if there's someone that wants to attend and can't buy the book, it's on me. My hope for this ministry is that cost isn't an issue for anyone and that we can just cover the cost of those workbooks for all attendees. That's what I foresee using this budget for. Another way you can help is your time. Currently, we're just offering the one session at a time, but my hope is, as, is that as this ministry grows, we may have multiple groups going on. And I don't know if that's going to look like meeting on different days of the week or having a big group at one time break into several smaller discussion groups. We're still figuring out those details. But either way we do that, I can't do it by myself. So, sorry, I lost my spot. <laughs> my goal is that those who have completed the Grief Share program previously, either here at Northside or elsewhere, um, might be drawn to lead a group. Or if you are someone who has um, an interest in a strong sense of leadership in a small group setting, that could also be helpful. Um, as a matter of fact, in, our, in this last week's study in our grief share session, we discussed that part of the grief process and part of our healing is reaching out and helping others start healing in their own grief. If that's something you're interested in, please reach out to me. You can also help by spreading the word. If you know someone who is currently grieving the loss of a loved one, let them know about our, our ministry. If it's something you want me to reach out to them about, I'd be happy to. Just know not everyone's going to be open to our program. Everyone processes their grief their own way and then in their own time. So don't feel discouraged if people don't want to hear about it. But just know that just by telling them, you're helping our ministry. And finally, your prayers. Pray for me as I lead this ministry. Pray for our current attendees. Pray for those who are going to attend in the future. Pray for our community that are hurting. And pray that we as Northside are the instrument to bring them comfort. As Al read earlier, Jesus tells us what to do. We're to help others. When we do for them, we do for him. If you want more information about the ministry, you can visit griefshare.org to learn more about the program. You can email grief at nscoc.org or simply reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you, Regina. I wanted her to go first. Um, not because I'm going to be long, but uh, Regina, I, I know that she was not the most excited about standing in front of the group and, and sharing. But uh, when something is on your heart, like grief sharing is, it's funny. You just put yourself in the right place and God take care of the rest. And God truly took care of the rest this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the, I don't have a clicker, so I'll just tell them that. Okay. The, the next thing that I wanted to, to talk about is a ministry that 
I think most of us are aware of people helping. People helping has been around for decades at Northside. Some of us uh, who've benefited from it can speak a great deal about it. Um, but this morning I am standing before you on behalf of the, the team. As you see, there are three of us, uh, Deanna Mesa, Josh Zimmer, and myself. Uh, we quietly walk around and we, uh, we uh, will quietly respond to the needs of, of others here at Northside. Uh, and, I, and I say it that way uh, because one of the things that I've learned about Northside in the years that I've, I, I've been a part of the congregation is that we are an extremely loving, loving congregation, uh, an extremely blessed congregation. God has blessed us. We're so fortunate. And sometimes because we're so blessed and so fortunate, it makes it difficult for people who are in need to come forward. It makes it challenging for them to admit that they have needs. And we don't want uh, our fears and our concerns about being uh, rejected or being seen as inadequate. We don't want those fears uh, to prevent people from getting, seeing the love of God. And that, that's really what people helping is all about. Let me ask you this morning. <clears throat> you know, I'm always known for standing up here and flying by the seat of my pants. But uh, let me ask you this morning, do you love the Lord? If you love the Lord, let me only hear you say, I love the Lord. Say it again. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And I I'm, praise God for you on that. One of the things that Jesus asked Peter the same thing. He turns to Peter and he says, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Of course, Peter responds just like you responded. Yes. Yes. You know I love you, Lord. His response is, feed my lamb. Again, Jesus says the same, asks the same thing just like I did with you. Do you love me? His response is, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus says, take care of my sheep. Take care of my sheep, feed my lamb. We are his sheep. The world, those who, who seek his to seek the love of Jesus are his sheep. God expects for us to feed and to take care of those sheep. In the reading that Al provided for us, and he said that, you know, I wanted to make, he, he wanted to start at 31, and I, and I said, that's fine. The, the thing that I want you to envision, I want you to envision the, the, the son of man, coming in his glory, standing before us and, and separating sheep on the right side and the goat on the left side and, and then telling them how thankful he has been for the way that, he had, that, that we have taken care of his sheep, the way that we have visited them uh, in prison, the way we have fed them when they were hungry. We, we've given them something to drink when they were thirsty. And then we stop and we say, but Lord, when did I do this for you? And he says that whatever you've done, for the least of my little ones you have done unto me. There are those of you over the years who have given to people helping. And I want you to know that God knows. Those who have benefited from, from people helping, they know. And, and I, at one time with people helping, one of the things that we used to do with people helping, we would help individuals uh, with the expectation that we teach them something along the way. We would expect that they go through financial peace ministry, uh, financial peace counseling. But we no longer do that. We no, no longer do that because God expects for us to do this. And people have, we've oftentimes helped individuals. We've, we've helped elderly people rebuild their, their home. We've helped them to do repairs that they had no, no means to be able to take care of. We've had, we've had members of the congregation who've fallen on, on bad times. And the one thing about bad times is a, it's a lot like grief. There is no timetable to when it ends. It's not going to be over. It may not be over. It may take three months. It may take six months. It may take three years. It may go on forever. And for those individuals who experience it, they beat themselves up, particularly when it comes to grief. They beat themselves up and they think, well, why can't I get over this? The same way that people who are going through bad times beat themselves up. But you know what? God expects for us to have an abundant life. 
And he wants us to have that abundant life. And, and people helping, ministry, enables them to be able to experience that abundant life. Several years ago, in 2012, Bob Goff wrote a book called Love Does. Love Does. And I love that book so much, though, that I even did a couple of workshops here at Northside on Love Does. See, because Love Does is about how God expects for us to demonstrate his love in the little things that we do. People helping is about Love Does. It's about recognizing that love is an action word. It's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It's a behavior. It's an action. It's something that we do. And so people helping is designed to provide sensitive, compassionate, Bible focus. And I, we say Bible focus, focus because biblically speaking, God has always required his people to take care of his people. God has always required for us to demonstrate our love in what we do to one another. So it is Bible focus, and we, we're here to support the members of Northside, but also the non-members of Northside as well. Ideally, the focus was on acute crisis, but I've learned that acute has its own definition. There are some people who, they may start in acute, but it may, be, it may uncover an ongoing need that they may have, and then they will turn to me and say, well, you know, Dexter, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for asking for help. I'm you don't, I really don't want you to help me. And I have to let them know that God has you on this. And they'll look to me and they say, well, well, how long does this last? And I'll say, until every dime is gone, if it has to. The thing that I have learned is to trust God as in, in people helping ministry. Because the one thing that I have learned is that there are those of you out there who have contributed to people helping that are amazing. And it's because of your love and your, your dedication to people helping, to putting God's love in action that has allowed this ministry to last as long as it, it has. And to be, as, to be as vibrant and to be as effective as it really is. Uh, we, don't, uh, we, we don't make a big deal out of it in terms of, I know the other shepherds have, have asked me at times in terms, of, in terms of how much do we need. Whatever people give is how much we, is how much we need. If uh, when we get to the point where we need help, we, we will start asking for help. If you notice that we have never, with people helping, have never come to the stage and said, please contribute to people helping. Why is that? Because God is already taking care of it through your love through your dedication. There are those of you who have gone to the website and have seen, seen clicked on the drop-down menu, and in that drop-down menu, you will see people, people helping there. And there are people who have clicked on that and have, have been extremely generous in contributing to people helping. That has allowed us to pay for people's utilities, to keep them, to, to pay for their, their rent, to keep them in their homes, to be able to provide for transportation so that they can get to places that they need to, that they can't, they couldn't otherwise be able to get there. For us to be able to pay for fruit baskets and things of that nature in the holiday periods. I mean, that's allowed us to be able to do some of those things in, in terms of people helping. And I am blessed as a result of being a part of this ministry. But it's like I said before, it's, just, it's not just me. There's a team of us as well. And if we can just bring that slide up. And that's the team. Excluding our spouses and our kids, of course. But I wanted you to understand that we, the reason I wanted to put the photos with our spouses and our, and our family members on is because they support us in this process. Nobody can make this happen by themselves. I promised John that I would be short this morning. But that's people helping in its essence. It's about love does. It's about demonstrating it in love. And it's not just money. It's giving of our heart. It, it's really what it's all about. Now this morning we have, you've, you've heard us talk about uh, walking alongside those who are grieving. You've heard, you, you've heard us talking about being there for those who are suffering and, and struggling. And you may say to yourself, you know, I'm in need, I'm, I'm struggling, or I'm not necessarily doing what I need to be doing when it comes to, to showing the love of God uh, to my brothers and sisters here at Northside and about. And, and I really want to do better. And you might need the prayers of, 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 of the church to be able to help you in that. At this time, what we want to do is, I know we have a song coming up.
the King of Kings. What I would, during, the, during the singing of the song, what we want to do is we want to give you the opportunity to come forward and ask for prayers or to go to the back and, and get with one of our shepherds and ask for prayers if, you desire, if, if, if you're in need of that at this time. If you're in need of support. Yesterday we said goodbye to Robert Tipton. And the, the grieving process for that family has only just begun. And, but there may be others who may be grieving or in, or in suffering. We, we want to use this as a time for you to come to God, to come to us as a church, to give us the opportunity to be blessed by you and for us to be able to hopefully be a blessing to you. So at this time, uh, I asked that if we could all could stand and begin, and as we sing the song, King of Kings, our shepherds, if you can uh, gravitate to the back for those who would, like, who would like for prayer this time, you can also go to the back and ask for prayer, and I'll be up front if, for those who may want to uh, seek prayer by coming and, and, um, and asking me up front. So at this time, let us stand and sing. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father Praise the Son Praise the Spirit to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died praise the Father praise the Son praise the Spirit three in one God of glory
you, Dexter. Thank you, Regina. Would you remain standing for a moment? Uh, for the, from the earliest days of the church, there was a moment in the gathering of Christians where they would stand and greet each other and share the peace of Christ with one another. In this moment, we encourage one another to be people of peace, that we would be peacemakers because of Jesus. And so we ask you to just stay where you are. Uh, don't cross the aisles. This is not a time for small talk. Um, uh, we will have time for that after the service. Um, but for now, simply turn to the person on your right and on your left, in front and, in, and behind, even if you don't know them, and say, may the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> may the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Peace, perfect peace In this dark world of sin The blood of Jesus whispers peace Recently, I had decided to apply for a better job at work. And when I was selected to move forward with these interviews, I did a lot of preparation for that moment. Um, I studied and I learned more about the company that I worked for. I practiced how I would answer the questions. I even bought new clothes. Getting the job was important to me, so I did everything I could to prepare for that moment. Now today I stand before you at the sacred table and I'm thinking to myself, what are the things that I need to do to prepare to commune with our Lord today? What are the things that I need to do for my heart to make sure that I'm ready to sit here with Christ and with my church family? Have I taken the time to examine my heart? Have I asked the Holy Spirit to show me the areas of my heart and my mind that I need to correct? And most importantly, am I able to stand here with a joyous heart and admittance that what Jesus did for me changed my life eternally in ways that I cannot even imagine? So in the next few minutes, what I'd like to do is read Isaiah 53 so that way we can prepare our hearts and our minds and remember what Christ has done for us. To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence 
like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with the deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care, yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed in our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was stripped and whipped so we could be healed. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of all of us. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short, in midstream, but he was struck down for the rebellion of my people, and he had done no wrong. Excuse me. And he never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal, but given a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his anguish, and he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servants will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, For he will bear all of their sins, and I will give the honor of a victorious soldier, because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sin of many and interceded for rebels. Please bow with me as I pray for both the bread and the cup. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the sacrifice that you were willing to give to us to change our lives eternally. Please forgive us of our sins and accept our communion with you today. The Lord, I pray, amen. I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, when it's all about you, all about you. What a beautiful morning of worship we've had. I know I am just been richly blessed, and I hope you have as well. I've seen some new faces, and I've seen some I haven't seen in a while, so I'm glad to be with you. If you're visiting with us for the first time, I hope you'll stick around and we can get to know you a little bit better. 
At 1030, we're going to have classes. We're going to have our children's classes in both departments. The youth classes are upstairs. And then all adults are encouraged to join one of our spiritual formation Bible class from the book of Acts. And you can pick up a flyer at the uh, information kiosk if you'd like to see what we have right here on the screen of where the classes are located and who are teaching. As we strive to bring more to know Jesus through the work here at Northside, we encourage you to give. And on our screen, we have the different ways that you can do that. I have a few announcements. Due to spring break this coming week, the Tuesday women's Bible class will not meet, and there will be no classes on Wednesday p.m. Well, it's that time spring has sprung, and we have our spring fellowship and egg hunt on Sunday, April the 2nd. Join us for a meal that is being supported by the Mexico Mission Team, and there'll be a uh, activities for the kids with the egg hunt to end our evening. We are collecting bags of candy or monetary donations to stuff those eggs, and we are uh, advertising in the community, so we want to stuff a lot of eggs. So please, if you would like to give to that ministry, you can drop your uh, donations at the children's kiosk. And they wanted to remind, no hard candy, please. If you want to order a meal or details, uh, you can pick up the Hunt flyer at the children's kiosk as well. All right, we love our city shirts. We have a limited number of We Love Our City shirts and stickers available for purchase. Visit the table in the atrium today, or you can order online at nscoc.org slash We Love Our City. If you have a shirt, we'd like to encourage you to wear that on April 2nd for our local Mission Sunday. The Congregational Care Ministry is sponsoring a Baked Potato Fellowship on Wednesday, March 29th, and it's going to start at 7 p.m. We're not going to have classes that night, and uh, we invite everyone to come and join us. We're going to have the baked potatoes, the, all the fixins, and the drinks, and we encourage you to come and bring a dessert. Well, it has been a wonderful morning, as I had said, worshiping together. And as we dismiss, if you would stand, and then following the reading of God's word, we will sing one last song. Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's sing together. <laughs> How I long to breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets To look upon the one who bled to save me And walk with him for all eternity there will be a day when all will bow before him there will be a day when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died and rose songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear. In the end, we'll see that it was worth it when he returns to wipe away our tears. There will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a to face with he who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. On that day, we join the resurrection 
and stand beside the heroes of the faith. With one voice, a thousand generations sing worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Forever he shall reign. So let it be today, we shout the hymn of heaven, with angels and the saints, we raise a mighty roar, glory to our God, who gave us life beyond the